And good morning. Welcome to Auto Retail Live. A slightly different format, but we are delighted that you can join us here for a webinar. Um, and we're all joining and dialing in from home. Um, I can confirm that there are no scheduled arguments in my household over the next 30 minutes. Uh, and the only possible distraction will, of course, be if the bin man turns up, uh, which is compulsory viewing. So I'll probably be distracted for a few minutes when he arrives. But uh, in all seriousness, over the next 30 minutes, our focus is on positive communication with customers uh, at this difficult time um, and trying to navigate where we are uh, in this new oh, yeah. environment. Um, this week certainly seems to be more about business organization, um, understanding how we organize ourselves internally, um, putting in procedures in place, getting the IT work. Um, and probably as we look in towards next week is when we're going to be thinking about that aspect of customer communication. So today's webinar is very much focused on uh, what we could do and planning to get started for next week. Thank you very much for taking time to join us. Uh, you can take part in the conversation um, on your screen by entering a question, um, or you can use the hashtag ARN Live. If it's the first time you've used this particular kind of webinar, you will see on screen um, there are a number of uh, areas that you can click on. You can see more about our presenters today. Um, you can see the, the slides. There are no slides uh, being uh, presented during this webinar, so uh, don't worry, you won't have to click through and download. It's more of a conversation. Um, and then there are the, is the text box area. So let's get started and introduce uh, our guests and our presenters today. Uh, we have with us uh, Robert Forrester, the, the CEO of Vertu, well known uh, and very visible online. Many of you probably follow uh, Robert uh, with his uh, insightful tweets uh, on Twitter. Uh, of course, Nick King, a familiar face from AutoTrader, the director of Insights, and from Rapid RTC, the online engagement and lead management company, uh, we have Pontus Risker, uh, and they will be taking us through. But if I can start and, and perhaps begin with Robert um, in the hot seat, certainly as CEO um, of Vertu, um, the world changed rapidly. How's the week been and, and what's the view from the CEO's chair, Robert? Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, well, this week's a lot better than last week, in my opinion. Last week, uh, we were really trying to work out what was going to happen. Uh, this week's been a lot clearer because actually we've had a lot more certainty around where the business is going to be. Uh, so I, I'm much more relaxed this week than I was last week. Uh, and I think the business is in control. We know exactly where we are and uh, everyone's sleeping a lot better. And does that feel about right, this idea that this week has been about orient orientating the business and next week is kind of getting out there and engaging with the customer? Is, has this been sort of circling the wagon? Oh, no, we, we've never not engaged with the customer. We thought this was going to be a major problem on the 1st of March. So we currently have 30 people answering all dealership phone calls at home, uh, centrally in Newcastle. Um, our officers shut where they're working at home. We've managed to move the entire business into people's houses. We've got service inbound, service outbound, internet sales contact centres, all fully up and running, have been all week, uh, but from people's houses with supervisors managing them all remotely. So the customer contact has never ceased. Um, clearly, our position is at the moment that the dealerships are closed, but as of Monday morning at 9 o'clock, the vast majority of our dealerships will reopen for service work for certain elements of society and certain customers, clearly, uh, and not on, not on a full basis. But um, we are we are in a reasonable position. And what's the what's the typical engagement with a customer? So if you've got your uh, colleagues who are talking to people, what are the kind of things that people are wanting to know and, and messages they're, they're listening to, they, they want to understand? Well, yesterday we did 700 service bookings. Uh, we took 300 internet sales inquiries. Our live chat facility is completely up and running, and that's in the core dealership business. In our online businesses, uh, we've got Virtual Lease Cars, which is an online PCH portal, fully up and running, and our Vans Direct um, van business based in South Wales is fully up and running as well. The, the customers, if they contacted us on the internet, wouldn't really notice much of a difference, apart from... They could ring up, they could text, they could do what they like. The only thing we can't do is actually uh, 
deliver cars to people's houses. We are not delivering mm. cars and we will not deliver cars until we get very firm guidance via the NFDA, the SMMT through government uh, as to the fact that we should deliver cars. I personally think it'd be wrong to deliver cars at the moment. Nick, I'd like to bring you in at this point, Director of Insight from Auto Trader. I mean, as the platform that people turn to, to to look for new cars, what's been going on online? Are people still searching for cars? Uh, is there a difference in the way they're looking for cars? Yes. Well, well first of all, I'd just like to say I'm um, fantastic to hear such positivity from uh, Robert it's, uh, and how, how they're dealing with all, all that's going on. Um, Yes, people are still searching for cars. Now, like all sites, we have seen a decrease in some traffic, but there's still a lot of people out there looking for cars and actually interacting with with us and with, as Robert has said, just said, 300 leads coming in straight away. We, we, we see a huge amount. It, and what happens is when the government announces something, we see a blip and we tend to see changes or dips and and increases and decreases in traffic as news emerges. And of course, this is unprecedented times. We haven't been here before. We're all, everyone's probably, worried, of course, naturally worried and concerned, and we're all staying at home. So there has been a quite a dramatic change in from last week to this week. We're all, we've all got to get used to this, but we are seeing changes. Um, we're still around 4.6 to 6.9 million adverts million adverts a day are being looked at. We're generating over 9,000 leads a day still, up to a couple of days ago, and these are a mixture of email, live chat, and text. So it looks like we, as people, are evolving, as we should do, into this online arena. Our indicators show that, of course, and we're now not allowed to walk in as much. Of course, we don't want to walk in. I've just heard my mum has just texted me to say the dumps are shut. We can't, we can't go to dumps anymore, literally about a second ago. So you can't take stuff to dumps. So, so everything basically is closing down. So as we would expect, walk-ins will decrease. Now, we did, we've done some research just before uh, this coronavirus took off. And actually what it was showing, and it was a massive sample and very robust, was that 70% of people would just walk in. They do all their research online because they can see their fantastic digital forecourt, and they just felt, I will walk in. But that's obviously going to change. Latest research. So the online, the, the online, the online community has remained obviously slightly different um, in in what they can do next. But I mean, Rick, you uh, work on lead management. Yours is a an international organisation. Um, can you give us a flavour of how this is playing out from other markets um, who may be ahead of us and some perhaps behind us? Because you have operations in various parts of the world. What, what's the experience from, from around the world from what you're seeing? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I, I guess we all used to look at this as a, you know, a plan and evaluate stuff on an annual basis or quarterly basis, monthly basis. Now everything is happening on a... 24 hour, 48 hour basis. So what was the start of this week is now very different to the end of this week. And and we're all going through this constant re-evaluation and re-planning cycles, keeping everybody really busy. And and we see that exactly same thing uh, internationally as well. So um, just pick on an example, France, um, there may be uh, two weeks ahead, a week and a half ahead of the UK market. And there the government was much more decisive early on in terms of this is these are now the restrictions, deal with it. And you then see an inevitable, very closely linked um, trend on the on the lead volumes as well, because obviously the same restrictions that you can't then go on site and, and what have you. And um, then there's another contrast if you look at North America, where there's been up till now much less restriction on in terms of the retailer networks. It's just a bit of a philosophical discussion then as to does that make life more difficult or, or easy? Um, but we've seen a more constant level of lead engagement, customer engagement in North America up till now. Now again, last few days there's been announcements in, in pockets where there might be closures coming up and we'll probably immediately then see that same trend take take place. In the UK, um, I sort of echo exactly what, what, what Nick was alluding to earlier is that um, we're still seeing inquiries come through. Um, I refer to them as inquiries because, of course, there might be a change to the nature of the com conversation together with the customer now because you can't do all the things that we used to do a couple of weeks ago. Um, but 
um, where we've seen a, a slight reduction in the UK now in traditional inquiries, let's call them form-based inquiries, um, they're no worse than December. So, so it's, 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 not, it's not a catastrophe by any means. And, and, and again, back to this point about things change very quickly. The last three days, we've seen a 25% increase in inquiries. We've seen a 350% increase in chats in the last three days. Robert, one of the, uh, thanks, Pontus. One of the one of the questions coming in. Um, can, I, can, I, I, can I just tell you though, if you actually look at Google searches on a 24-hour basis for the past week, Google automotive searches are massively down. This is not, in my opinion, like December. Uh, Google searches for automotive terms are down. Website sessions are down. Uh, people are not currently sat at home thinking they're going to get a car. That's not to say we haven't got inquiries. We have, mm. but I'd be very disappointed with this level of inquiries in December. So mm. yesterday, week on week, internet sales inquiries yesterday were down 45% on the previous week. And frankly, we were obviously starting to go into it uh, at the back end of last week. Last week, we were down 40%. So I actually think, yes, inquiries are coming through, but I think you can paint far too rosy a picture about the current level of inquiries. We see the same Robert, thing. That to, sorry, Robert, sorry. that leads to one of the one of the questions in terms of tone of voice. Uh, one of the questions we received is a theme coming in terms of tone of voice at this time. Um, it, it's, a, it's a dilemma, isn't it? Is it a sell? Is it a reassurance? What's the what's the tone that you're dealing oh, with? I don't, with think, I don't think there's a massive sell. I think that would be a catastrophic CRM strategy at the moment to go massive sell. People are wondering whether they're going to live, die, whether their relatives are going to make it through, uh, yeah. or whether there's food in the supermarkets. I think to go to them with heavy, hard-hitting messages around sales would be a complete mess. We actually took quite a contrary decision over the past fortnight of not issuing emails to our database. We have not sent a single communication to our database. Our view was if our customers want to get a hold of us with our brands, which are clearly well known, they will go to our website. Our website has been 100% up to date with the latest information and will be 100%. At 12 o'clock, we will have on our website which dealerships are closed, which dealerships are open. Uh, we have absolutely not gone for mass email mailings. We have used social media, though. So every time there's an update, we've used social media to point people to the websites, and that's actually obviously leads to spikes on the website. Um, but I think it would be broad idiocy, frankly, to send sales, hard-hitting sales messages out um, when we don't know when we're going to be able to live with a car. Now, the mood of the country might shift in a fortnight time, three weeks' time, and actually if you look at Italy, there, there is a, a bit of a shift now. Um you know, if you were a wise man, you would be buying bulk load laser thermometers because when we reopen, I heavily suspect, like in China and in starting to see in Europe, we'll have somebody on the front gate checking the temperature of all customers and colleagues when they arrive. Mm. Um, I think that is almost inevitable, actually. So uh, there's a lot to think about, but no, now is not the time for the hard sell message. Yeah, I completely, completely agree with Robert. on that. Think so, oh, sorry, sorry, Nick. You, you want I was just going to say, I completely, in. completely agree. We have to think about the country. We have to think about each other, and we have to think and, and keep our NHS working and everyone safe. This is not the time to be out with hard hitting messages, but it is the time to keep your keep your business up and ready, so that when we can open again, because we will get through this, we will all be ready yeah, and survive. And we've to, so, we've got twenty five in house software developers, and none of them are on the furlough. <laughs> not a single brilliant. one of them. They are busy doing That's exactly right. Exactly right to do. So this, and, and and of course, this is also the time to get your digital forecourt looking as good as it can be. Yeah. This is the time to rephotograph, to repri, or to, to re talk about, describe the cars again, make it look as amazing. Well, as pricing it can. is pr pricing is. I mean, clearly, we need management comments. We need attention grabbers. We need the right Ooh. photographs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, one of the interesting things is around price and where used car prices go. Um, uh, there isn't actually a current market for used cars in the United Kingdom, so there certainly can't be a price crash because if there's no market, there's no price. Exactly. Um, so uh, it's just is a statement of fact. Is this going to speed us? Is this going to speed us on the journey to online buying? I know there is a there, you know things are moving, but but Robert, do you see this as a turning point when when things will move further in that direction and quicker? Probably. 
Yeah, I think you'd be a brave man uh, to say it wouldn't. Um, however, the car is still, a used car particularly, is, is a, a unique specimen. And therefore, I still think the, the, the online progression will be very, very slow. I think this probably speeds it up. But we've had online retailing of used, used cars since May 17, and there is no major customer appetite for it. Depends what the country looks like when it comes out the other end. And if we're checking everybody's temperature at the front door of the dealerships, that's a different scenario than we've been used to, isn't it? So I think clearly all the major groups will be heavily investing in online retailing and, and seeing whether the customer's pushing that direction. And I suspect the early indications from Europe are that, yes, it will. We're asking the question on a regular basis, too. So, sorry, sorry. So just on this, we're asking the question to a sample on a regular basis, too, on are you interested in online retail and, and would this happen? So we, it's, at the moment, it's a, it's a bit of a bit meh, bit sort of yes, sort of, not sure yet. Um, agree with Robert, it's possibly too early to tell. But what we will do is we're going to make all this data available on our social channels as it comes in yeah. every, every couple of days so we can all keep a track on it. So, it, But it's changing and it will change. But who, sadly, who knows what the future will look like? We, we, we're not future sayers, you can't guess. But you can make yourself as ready as you can be for when we come back alive and kicking, as we all pray that we will be. Pontus, I want to turn to you. I mean, the, the point that Robert made there um, of, in terms of outbound communication by email, um, which might be the, the kind of the thing that people default to, not not doing it and clear and clear why they're to are taking that position what are your thoughts in terms of a positive engagement with customers at this time um the the um there's there's two real sort of um, aspects to this one is the customer takes the initiatives and communicates with the business the the the, the flip side of that is keeping a thread of communication practically going out to customers um we very sort of wholeheartedly take the approach that the tone is is vital um be outgoing on or incoming uh, outgoing communication uh, we got this morning a, a an email from ocado uh, about the online shopping and and actually they've done a really great job of actually explaining what's going on and what's going to happen next and how they're going to treat people etc it was it was factual and it was a very very good tone to it if it was very helpful and when you can help somebody in times like these people are much more receptive to to positive engagements because they'll remember it they'll react to it really well so on an outgoing basis, absolutely, I, I think that's, that's critical. Incoming, there, there's a couple of sort of simple rules of, of thumb here, which is basically um, if you're keeping the online um, channels available, which most retailers, retailers have opted to do, certainly those that, that we work with, um, then make sure that there's a strategy for responding to those leads. Robert just gave a great mm -hmm. example of how, how Virtue is set up uh, from, from their perspective. And and as, as customers then make make contact i think it's also really important to to stick to the channel that the customers are engaging with as much as possible because um, now more than ever you have no idea what's going on in the in the, in the consumers customers lives you know there might be dogs and families around or there might be might be you know they might be healthy they might be ill you just don't know so stick to what they're dictating at that point in time and try to respond and engage on that channel and and uh, fundamental in that in that kind of communication right now is this authenticity is is back to what, what robert was saying earlier is is some of the classic kind of you know sales skills etc that would have been taught over the years we kind of have to park that for the time being and and communication really need to be really needs to be authentic mm -hmm. What, what, what can we do? How can we help? Where can we potentially not currently help and try to get that as early in as, po as possible into the conversation so that you're controlling the expectations? And we've had, a, we've had a real well. challenge. We've had a real challenge the last 10 days because we have got a 10-day ITV TV campaign booked from mm. about the 6th of April, which was going to be a 10-day, five years, 0% finance event, which mm. clearly is not going to be on. Uh, and we had to redesign all the creative and all the messages last week as to what well, what are we going to say? What's the tone of it? Clearly, uh, we, we've got a lot of creative, so it will be around, you know, you, you know, our websites are open, our people are there, please contact us, you can research online, 
and uh, away we go. And I think we've probably got the balance right, but it, it was a real dilemma for us as to how do we do a hard-hitting 10-day TV campaign when we're actually closed for physical sales. Yeah. Absolutely. And we've seen some great examples of that as well. Um, um, Steve, Steve, our marketing CMO made the comment that he's, some, some companies have simply sort of opted to, to, to have a blanket message out there to say, stay safe. That's our message to you right now. Mm. No more, no less. Mm. Uh, if, you, if we yeah. do all behave like this, and we are all behaving like this, um, then we should all come out of this on the better on, when it all comes through, because this is a time, as you say, Pontus, right, this is a time for honesty and humility and just being, come on, let's, we're all in this together, let's just, be, let's just get through this. We all want to have a business when it ends. We all do. We're all passionate. Let's just get through this and let's just not overtly push the sales. I'm still getting, as probably some of us are, sales calls from other industries who are just trying to drum up business and quite frankly saying, oh, sorry, I can't even talk to you. Of course I can't talk to you because I'm going to buy something now. So be real, be stick with it. If we And if we work with this, we'll get through this quicker. If we all ignore the government's advice and we still go on our bloody walks and don't and don't stay home, then it will take longer. So for God's sake, I know, I know we will do, just stay home. Let's get this over quickly. It's my Pontus, fervent there's wish. A, there's, a, there's a specific issue here, obviously, is that whilst business is closed for, should we say, general, general uh, population, there are key workers. I mean, should we be promoting... Yeah specific messaging for key workers here to help them so again being yeah. very clear in communication what we can do i, I, I yeah, absolutely we've, think we've so. identified sorry carry on go on go on jump in well i mean there's two aspects aren't there if a nurse's car blows up this afternoon and she wants a new one i think she's going to struggle to get one actually and that is something we're going to have to grapple with i suspect actually that something will be cobbled together locally. Our dealerships from Monday will have a physical presence, and I heavily suspect that something would, would actually be done around that. Um, but we're clearly not open for retail sales. In the service side, which is probably my bigger concern, uh, the, we, most companies interpreted Boris as close. When actually you start thinking about it and you think, well, we've got vans on the road delivering food, uh, we've got people in cars doing vital jobs. You know, the plumber making sure a house isn't flooded. That's a pretty vital job for the family whose house is flooded. Mm -hmm. So we've identified three sets of customers that from Monday we will serve. First of all, the commercial vehicle sector that's vital to keeping us moving. Two key workers, however you want to define it. And three vulnerable people who need their car for mobility to the shops to get food. They're the key three elements. And clearly... Um, we are going to make sure that our communication is primarily directed to those people because we are not going to be open just for general business from Monday. Uh, we will be trying to highlight the, the key elements of the service that we're going to provide. And everybody else, ostensibly, me included, has been told to stay indoors. Now, the government's actually not quite clear on whether that is the right strategy or not. Uh, there are some who would interpret what the government's saying is that garages are open for full business, but that's not how the vast majority of the sector are actually going to interpret it. So from a practical point of view, then, will you, I mean, obviously, Robert, we're not trying to make your business a case study, but you've identified your three worker groups there. Is there are they people, you will communicate that uh, from your website and social channels. Would you reach out to those people as well or, 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 or not? Well, I mean, we've been, we've been taking calls, actually, all the way through this. Our contact centres have not stopped actually um we're, we're obviously we're taking around two thousand phone calls a day at the moment normally around 10 which tells you some drop off and we've been making sure that we've got the details of key workers so that when we open we actually can book them in so that communication is going uh, we're not going out directly to a database because actually our database is actually quite difficult to identify as a key worker we've actually tried to do that segment the database and we've got people doing that at the moment and we think we've identified about 400,000 people on our database who we think are key workers. And we may actually do some specific segmented marketing by email, actually, for them. But it's a very difficult judgment because it still could yeah. be, you know, I don't think we can just cut off what our judgment is about who's vulnerable or who's a key worker. Yeah. Um, 
So the, the, I think we will go down the route of our, we are very visible on the internet. We are still doing pay-per-click uh, marketing, actually. Um, and then clearly we've got these very large contact centers working from home to make sure that we are we are there to answer the phone, do live chat or, or deal with emails. Manufacturers clearly got, a, you know, we get lots of contacts via manufacturers as well. On the used car marketing side, um, clearly we're on the major third-party portals. We've got our own website. Uh, but our priority is to get the service departments up and running for, for Monday. A few quick-fire questions, if I may. One of them, um, we'll start with you, Robert, is um, Mark and Chrysalis, how should we handle people coming to the end of a PCP agreement? Now, there isn't necessarily an answer to all of these, but what are your no, thoughts? I think, there's a, I think there's a very clear answer to that question, which is contact the finance company and then they will roll it, would be my gut feel on that one. Uh, I don't think okay. that's an essential piece of business, frankly. Yep, okay. Um Pontus, what, coming out of this uh, situation, what type of messages should we be getting ready? Um, we, we've talked a lot here around what's happening now, but and, and Robert's indicated thinking about actually the practical details of an ad campaign. But but for other businesses, Pontus, what, what, what's that messaging we should be thinking about? Um, from, from when we start coming out of the current situation. Correct. As we move forward. Um, I, I, I think it's simply, it's simply a question of, of maintaining relationships with those customers who are currently t talking to, uh, to businesses and, uh, and making sure that that kind of relationship stays intact. We always we make this, this comparison about actually creating a relationship with the people you're working with and, and that builds trust. If you can keep doing that, then, then as we come out of this process, the, the time has been spent well to, to, to create relationships and trust in a, in, in a difficult time. So to then turn it all around and start sort of feeding some good news stories when the, when the time is ready is, mm. is probably the right, right approach. Um, but, but, but again, serving value in those communications. So, hey, just a heads up, it looks like we may, you know, th this may be the next step in the process and, and, and this is now an un anticipated opening and you may then start sort of tying something around there. But again, you can't just flip from, from being compassionate to then suddenly being, being um, t taking sort of a hard-nosed approach. There has to be a very, very, very gradual process here. And, and you know, we talk about coming, coming out of the crisis, but what is actually the definition of that? Because there might be a point in time when we say, mm -hmm. you know what, now uh, doors are open to a showroom. Customer behavior, consumer behavior will, 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 will be a completely different kettle of fish. Because actually, um, when will we start shaking hands again? When, when do we comfortably sit on a public transport and be very comfortable mm. with everybody around us? There is no mm. hard and fast rule for when that time happens. And, and I think that's a very, very important point, that, because if you actually sit back and put the crisis to one side, what does this do for the car business? And everybody will focus on it's all going to go online. It won't all go online, actually, to be honest. Mm. What's it do for demand for private vehicles? We've all sat there in these seminars listening to absolute gibberish about shared mobility. You know, the end of the private motor car, because everyone's going to do Uber and car share schemes. And this isn't going to happen anytime soon because people are going to want private individualized mobility. They ain't going to be sat on trains that, you know, they are going to want their own car to get them from A to B in their own space. And I think this is going to be a magnificent underpin. I did actually hear a fabulous fact last week that Google searches for used cars under £2,000 of value in London went through the roof last week. <laughs> I want to be on my own. Robert, I don't want to share I, I want a car. Just, Bloody right, yeah. That's I, a really good point. Robert, I, I want to just pick up on a point there you talked about there. That Pontus raised lots of people asking about the practicalities of staffing a workshop and maintaining distancing as you're working yeah. in that working environment yeah. have you got a, a thoughts on yes. that yes uh, yeah no we've, we've given this quite some consideration and um in a in a workshop with 10 technicians normally we are going to have three or four maximum so if you think about a workshop then i've got a ramp between each technician which helps the front door will actually physically be shut. Uh, we will know when customers are due and we are going to stagger them. 
the general manager of the business will literally be at the front door to assess the customer as best he can with common sense. And we are not having that many customers coming in. So we have got large showrooms. We can absolutely get two meter distance. We're not going to have a queue of 10 people at eight o'clock in the morning on service reception like normal. We are going to absolutely be having few people in the in the service reception area. The staffing levels will be, you know, the service manager will be there with the general manager uh, individually processing customers. There will be no queue. We are, we're absolutely clear on that. So the natural numbers of people in the dealership should be quite small, actually. And I think that's really important because there is an absolute nervousness, quite rightly, around colleagues coming in and exposing themselves to cars and people. Um, I think the message I've got is we've got a job of work to do. You know, you don't want to see the A1 with rafts of vans blown down and no one turning up to fix them. Uh, or nurses not being able to get to work. You know, it isn't a risk-free exercise. Uh, nurses, I mean, my wife's a, uh, in the med is actually a doctor and is probably going to go back into the profession quite quickly, I suspect. She's had a call-up, and uh, it's not going to be without risk. And actually, we will have to accept some risk. We can't make this risk-free, but we have a job to do. Now, easy for me to say that for my back bedroom, of course. Tricky. Robert, we have reached the end of our time. We're just, just on 30 minutes. I'd like to just uh, sum up. Thank you to our guests. Thank you for all the questions. Um, I'd like to start uh, with Pontus, and we'll come through Nick and to Robert. Um, quick thoughts summing up, and indeed, um, life hack. Anything you have observed that is useful from working at home? Pontus. Well, I went. I spent three three years working from home back in the day. Um, the, I, I think I think the I, I think from my perspective I, I, I start with the day with exercise so I know that I start the day with, with energized and, and what have you probably the biggest life hack is start start and end the day because otherwise you're working 24 7 so have a start Thank of the you. day and have an end to the day start and end with some exercise Nick um, yes you only have to wear a shirt oh, no, no, is, is the ridiculous <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not going to stand up. No, no, no seriously, <laughs> dress again. Don't don't wear your pajamas. Get dressed as if you're going to work. So get dressed. Don't and and wear you know trousers and uh, shoes and actually assume you are working. So if you just sit around in your shorts, you can't get your business head on. That's my that's my life hack. And I agree with Pontus. So do some exercise first. But crack on, crack on. Is my thing. I've got two things to say. First thing to say is get up three hours before anybody else in the house to give yourself some space. Good plan. Good one. <laughs> good one. Good one. <laughs> Which yeah, I, mean, like I have that. to say I am absolutely doing. You know, there's nobody around at five o'clock in the morning in my house. Um, second thing is just actually count your blessings. It's all a terrible situation. It's a crisis. I am not sat at the bottom of a wet trench fighting an enemy with a rifle. Correct. I'm having my tea with my family. I am watching Netflix. It is not that bad. Well said, Robert. A great point to end. Bang on. Yeah. And thank, thank you to, uh, to Pontus, to Robert, and to Nick. Uh, we will pick up uh, the conversation in another couple of weeks when we'll be focusing uh, on information and positive practical help. Uh, for the retail sector. So thank you very much for joining us for this auto retail live webinar. Uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. My life hack, this webinar has been brought to you from my ironing board, which I find is quite a useful <laughs> multi-level surface upon which to hold online meetings. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Thank Bye. You. Thanks, everybody.